everyone, this is uh, Mike Bon, and welcome. Um, today we're going to go over funding flips, um, episode two, overcoming the experience. Um, the last time we actually went over funding basics. So if you did not see that, you can just go out to the YouTube channel. I will put a link to that out here. But if you have not seen it, what we're going through um, is getting all these basics down. Um, the first week of every month is all about funding. So we're going to go through seven or eight different episodes on funding. And all of these episodes will be and can be seen out on YouTube. So we're going to go through credit. We're going to go through everything. The, and these will all be available to you um, on YouTube. So if you did not see one, you can go back and check it. If you have any questions, just please put them in the chat box and we'll get back to them right at the end um, and answer anything and everything we can. Our whole goal here is to get you the experience, to get you the knowledge so you could get going, can get moving on doing flips or even burr. Because part of our series, how we have this set up is we are going through funding fundamentals. Then we're going through the second week is always about properties, how to find them, how to properly um, go through the ARVs. The third is Burr, how to buy properties with zero down. And the third is just alternative ways. So, and this series is going to keep going out so you can learn everything you can. We've been doing this for 21 years. We've seen, set a lot of people free in three, as we call it. And this all comes down to is if you do this, you do the fundamentals in three years at the most, you could have freedom. Freedom from if you want to work, if you don't want to work living off rentals, um, funding your own flips, whatever it is, we've seen it. We've seen people start with nothing and get to where they're financially set after three years. So that is what our goal is here. Um, we are lender, our, we are a lender that is investor focused and always have been for the 21 years. So our goal is to make sure you're successful. If you're successful, we're all successful. So the quicker we can make sure you understand these things, but also to help you become more profitable, give you the tools, give you the information, and also be a resource for you. Because if you win, we win. Um, we've helped thousands of people, done thousands and thousands of transactions over the 21 years. So we've seen a lot. We've come across a lot. We're a great resource when you have a deal. And until you start having those deals, it's just great to get this information so you can understand it. So. Here, we're gonna go over one of the biggest hurdles that people come across, and that's experience. They go to a lender and they're like, well, what experience do you have? And what lenders are typically looking for is someone who has actually been in ownership or had you know, part ownership or direct ownership of a flip or a rental. So you know, we're gonna go through what experience do you need by each lender. So like I said, on episode one, we kind of went through the different kinds of lenders that will lend to flippers and actually uh, any kind of investors. So make sure you go check that out again. Um, and then how can you create experience if you don't have anything? And then three quick ways to get past the experience hurdle because the sooner you get moving, the sooner you're going to um, get to the next level and the next level, but you need to start. And you need to not allow you know, experience to be that hurdle. Um, so once again, you know, go out and check us out. I'm going to actually put up a link. So if anybody wants to go out and look at that, they can follow that through um, and find that funding basics um, and go through exactly what we went through. So, so let's dive in here and let's kind of go through what lenders require. Typically, when people think about lending, they're always thinking about banks. We go through that in, in this first series, but Banks are probably the biggest hurdle for investors who are just starting out unless you have a high net worth, you have a really good job that would cover all the payments, and you have the monies to put down. If you do not have those, they're looking for a minimum of three to five successful deals that you were on as part of the ownership group or solely did yourself. Now, it gets a little easier as we go down this list too. And just as you know, there's two kinds of hard money lenders. There's national lenders, there's big companies. We call them computer lenders because if you go into their, they put all your information into the computer 
they spit out they'll tell you if they will give you money and what kind of loan to values and everything else they give they typically are looking for people who have two to five deals completed in the last 24 months that's generally what all of them are looking for now they do have some programs if you have no experience um, but what they do is of course they require more money down which means lower loan to values um, and they do charge higher rates and stuff ideally they're looking for two to five deals done some of even the bigger ones require six to ten deals done in the last 24 months in other words they're looking for the big players out in the field so local hard money lenders like us like hundreds of them in you know your community um, you can get in and we do it all the time with zero experience and we're going to kind of go through exactly how you do that how you set it up um, but there is there are options to actually borrow the money up front from a lender with zero experience and grow from there this is all about growing through the lending process so we talked in the last episode too about other kinds of sources of funds and that's usually a partnership family or friends that could actually fund the deals for you now experience for them is varies there's no way to tell because some family members will believe in everything someone does and fund anything and everything so in that case you don't need any experience to go through that now partners typically you're going to need some kind of experience because they're putting up all the money they're the finance part of the whole transaction and they're going to want to see some kind of experience but that experience is really based on what their criteria is and they may be someone who used to do it and they, they come in and say hey let's partner i'll teach you so just find out from them you're going to see as we go through this that there's going to be all kinds of different requirements from each lender and everything you need to understand what you bring to the party and then find the lender that'll work with you don't get frustrated because some of the bigger lenders are not going to work with non-experienced people just understand that's part of this whole transaction so go find the people who will actually work with you and build from there so that's what we say here is like shop around look around you know as I say, you know, like lenders are like, let's just say car dealerships, you know, some lenders are some car dealerships do used cars, some do new, some do high end, some do, you know, entry level. All lenders have different requirements that they want to, you know, who they want to lend to. They have different underwriting guidelines, all those things. So make sure you shop around and don't get frustrated and that you know some of these banks or someone else may not want to work with someone who does not have experience that's just the way their guidelines are your job is to find hunt shop around for the people if you don't have any experience will work with people with no experience also understand just like i said with banks hard money lenders they all have their own uniqueness and guidelines so shop around go out to bigger pockets go over where you're, wherever you find have resources and ask around who will do a loan if i do not have any experience uh, so you want to make sure you don't get frustration because frustration is typically the thing that stops people um, like what do i do next hey i talked to two banks and they said no now what do i do go find the two banks or the two hard money lenders or whoever partners who will actually lend to you um, so here's another thing that you could do to create experience, especially when you're going into the local hard money lender, partner, or even family or friends to show and create the experience if you don't wanna jump in and just do a deal yourself. Number one is your team. You know, have a good realtor. Have a good realtor that will actually do all the comps for you, put it into a nice portfolio. So when you present it to a lender, it looks professional it looks like you know what you're doing you know have a good contractor who's actually worked on flips contractors are different too some of them do not want to work on properties and flips and or priced out of the market or whatever it may be make sure you have a good team if that's a lawyer if that's a wholesaler if that's a realtor put your team together so when you go to a lender say hey 
it's not only on me, my realtor's checking everything. My contractor is going through and making sure everything is done and his bid is gonna make sure the house gets done. Make them feel more comfortable that you know what you're doing even on that first deal. As we said before, another easy way to create experience is go find a partner, someone who is kind of maybe out of the flip game and just wants to, to be basically the money side of it. We do this with contractors all the time where we're the money side as they gain experience for the, you know, the first two to five, uh, you know, opens up other options for them too. So look for someone and they're out there, the real estate groups, uh, everything else that they have some money and it may be a family member it may be just someone you know who wants a better return. But even when you do this, go in there and show them that you have your team, show them you have everything. And when you partner, I, I may have said this before, but make sure you have ownership in that property because the, the banks, the big lenders, even some of the smaller lenders will verify when you have done flips that you were part of the ownership. Not that you just did all the work, but you have to have some ownership and that means when you do, when you do these partnerships and everything else, be part of the ownership group, make sure you're there. The other thing that I've seen people do is just, instead of spending 30 grand for a course like fortune builders or whatever is work for a flipper. Flippers are pretty busy. And if you could go in there and, and say, hey, I'll help you, you know, comp out a property and I'll help you, you know, work with the contractors and I'll help you as long as you teach me what you're doing so I could go out and do this in my market. Um, you may not get paid. Some of them do, some of them don't. But if you work for someone and you could see it go through, like from start, from purchase to rehab to sell, now you have some experience of seeing everything that's done. And when you go to a lender, you could say, look, I was involved from start to finish. So I know it all. I just don't know one little piece. I just don't know the purchase side or the rehab side or the sales side. I know it all because I worked with someone. Um, but here's three ways if you don't want to do some of those things um, that are possible, can work. Um, but most lenders without, with working with people without experience, they're looking for one thing is to lower their risk because people without the experience may not understand exactly everything that could or may go wrong. So they're going to look to lower their risk. A couple ways they can lower their risk. You put in more money into the transaction. So maybe a typical lender would look for you to have 20 to 25% equity in the deal after you fix it up. Maybe they're going to require 30 to 35%, which means you're going to have to bring in money. Maybe they're only going to cover 80% of the purchase, 80% of the fix up, and you have to put the rest in. What this means is you're taking some of the risk off the lender because they're going to lend less and you're putting more money in, which puts more risk on you, but gets you the deal. And this will change as you do more and more deals, but they get going, these are the things you have to do. That money does not necessarily have to come from you. It could come from gap funding. Gap funding is money you borrow from someone else who may not have enough money to fund a whole deal, but maybe they have 40 or 50,000 in their IRA or their checking, they wanna make some kind of you know, revenue from it, and they're willing to lend it to you to fund the gap between what the first lender will do and what that lender is requiring you to put in. So basically you're using their money to fund the amount of money you need to put into the deal. You're just using other people's money in this, this part. And it could be money, it also could be money do you just have, family, friends, whatever it may be. Or instead of money, maybe you have a property that has a lot of equity and they cross collateralize that property. You just have to make the loan less risky for the lender to jump into that first one. And once you successfully do one, two, all these requirements start going down. You just got to get going and moving. Um, number two is you find a great deal. So if you find a great deal, which means low loan to value, tougher in some markets, like we're in the Denver market, a little bit tougher, but it's still there. We see them. But there's other markets where finding a deal at 60%, maybe 65% all in. Your local hard money lenders will take that into account. National companies and banks typically don't take that into account because they still want 10 to 
of your own money into the transaction. So find a good deal, find a local hard money lender to fund something like that because they will just look at the pure numbers. Here's an example. We just funded a deal last Friday for a person in um, a smaller town in Colorado. A national lender would not do it um, even though the purchase price and their rehab was 55% of the after repair value. So he had a great deal. Loan to value, he had other things going for him, but they once again didn't care that it was worth 200,000. They still wanted him to have some money in. And he's like, why would I do that? I have a great deal. You're very secured here. Um, let's just look at the loan to value and, and where it's going to be. Local lenders love great deals. So find a great deal, local lenders will work with you. And then go local for your funds. Just like I said, find the local person, build a relationship with them, show them that you know what you're doing, stay persistent, stay honest with them. You know, whatever you do, tell them everything you know, everything that you're trying to do, and they could more than likely help you. Um, get the lender to help you also. Let them comp out the property and everything else. They are a great resource for you. But like I said, you know, experience should never stop you. Everyone started with zero experience. Everyone in this business started with zero experience. So understand zero experience should not stop you, but you should start now. Don't be that person who in five years says, I wish I would have started or 15 years. We just had a couple of people in the last week who from two different areas, two different states that come to us said, I wish I would have started 15 years ago. I've been thinking about doing this for 15 years. Take that move, go right now, which means maybe it is giving up part of the profits. Maybe it is that partnership or finding that great deal, spending the time to find the great deal, just not jumping on the first thing. But whatever you do, start now because zero experience should not stop you, even if it means partnering, even if it means working with a experience flipper and getting the experience from them, but building those relationships now with lenders. So as you find something, they're ready to go also. So start now, build, you know, understand the money side. That's what we're going through in this first week of every month is the money side. The second week is the property side, how to find them, how to value and find the good ones. So know those things. You get the, all these little basics in, and this is a very, very good, profitable venture. And you control everything you do. You could do two or three flips and make 20 or 50 grand per flip, depends on the things, and do two or three, and that's all you do, and you enjoy the rest of your time. So here's the experience that we require. You know, like direct knowledge is best for flips. That means if you're a realtor, contractor, whatever it may be, that is, that is great. But the best thing, especially if you have no experience, is look for those loan to values that make sense. Um, or compensating factors like, hey, I may not have the most experience or any experience, but I do have a decent job. I do have some money. I do have something else to put in or a co-signer. My family will help me out. Whatever that may be, we could help, you know, we, we work with a not, you know, like 20 to 30% of our business is people have little to no experience, but it's them doing a lot of the work and a lot of the grunt work. We're just there to support them, help them verify some of their LTDs, uh, LTVs, numbers, make sure it makes sense, um, go through the numbers with them, show them where it is. But not, the third one, and we run against this a lot, is be honest, be upfront with someone, because if a lender starts seeing inconsistencies, it doesn't matter your experience. They don't wanna to try to figure out what's true and what's not true. They're just gonna move on and that's, you know, that's where you're gonna hit a you know, hurdle. We have clients right now who've done many flips and then the honesty starts, you know, varying and we have to stop working with them and now they're not doing anything because they're relying on us, but we don't have the time as lenders to figure out what's correct and what's not. So just be honest, um, find the deals, find the people who can help you, partnerships, um, flippers, anything else like that. So these are just little quick snippets on building. Remember to go back to that YouTube channel 
and check out the first funding thing. We have some things about the property and it's gonna keep growing from there. We're gonna go over credit, building your portfolio, everything on this funding side and who are the lenders and how to get into banks so they, they start reaching out to you instead of you trying to find them. That all builds over time. So check us out on our YouTube channel. Um, have a lot of stuff on Facebook. If you have a deal, if you have something now you wanna discuss it, email us, call us. We'd be glad to go through it. If you're still looking, trying to understand, um, you know, get on these YouTube videos, find other YouTube videos. And we're also gonna start a deal scenario uh, once a month where we go over deals and look at them and break them down. So if people have deals, we'll look at them or we'll just bring in examples of deals we've done so people can see it on the finance side from A to B and how we helped and what we've done. So the next in the series of funding, which is the first week, will be you know credit and income. What do lenders require? Will I get approved with where my credit is? Or how do I make what I have work for me right now? How do I make this work? Who checks credit? Who does not check credit? Is credit always an issue? All of those kind of things in the funding side of it. And like I said, if anything else, all of these will also be available, available on that YouTube channel. So always check the YouTube channel. Um, and on the YouTube channel, there'll also be something below with um, handouts and some stuff like that will help you um, with these episodes as we go along. So as we always say, happy investing. We'll stick around after this video for any questions, um, but as far as this recording, we're going to stop that. And then if anybody has any questions, please let me know. We'd be glad to answer them. And if not, we will see you on the next episode. And like we said, happy investing. Thanks, guys.